What's up guys, uh, this is Skytech Freak and today I have a review again for the last version of the Android Q beta for the Essential phone. Now if you guys have seen my earlier video, I actually said that the beta 4 was going to be the last uh, Android Q beta before Android Q officially released. Uh, this was like two months back and I don't know why I thought that that would be the last beta, why beta 4 would be the last. I think I heard it from somewhere and then I said it on my video but then there's straight up been like two new releases of Android Q betas for this phone and for all other uh, eligible phones of Android Q. But we do know now that Android, uh, the beta 6 of Android Q is going to be the last beta before Android Q officially rolls out. I don't think I'll be sitting here making another video of Android Q beta 8 uh, <laughs> like I've done with 4 and then 6. But yeah, this does seem to be, or at least it's for now confirmed to be the last beta of Android Q before Android Q officially rolls out with the new Pixel device that's already been teased a lot and the reason I didn't do a beta 5 update is because sort of the beta 5 uh, changes weren't really that big they were mostly bug fixes and things like that and so one or two of the bugs that I had mentioned in my previous video of beta 4 on the essential phone had been fixed uh, but again beta 6 is a far bigger uh, more comprehensive I think update than beta 5 was from beta 4 and again, this should be the last update we do of Android Q betas on this phone before it officially releases in the net. And uh, the Essential phone should be one of the first phones to get Android Q officially as well, along with OnePlus and obviously uh, the Pixel devices. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's just do a quick um, overview of what's new because we've already done a review of what all has really changed in Android Q. So some of the f like bug fixes and some of the new features, if you can call them that, from beta 4 to beta 6 uh, is something we can jump straight into. So as you can see, um, let's go for over the bug fixes from beta 4 that were there both in beta 5 and now they're on beta 6. So as you can see uh, earlier when you like when you go into an app, of course, you get this bar down there. Uh, I can show you this bar with any of these apps, which is basically the gesture, uh, the gesture bar. Again, you can change this obviously in settings where you just go into settings. Uh, where was that? It's in device, in system, and gestures. And of course, you can change your system navigation to gesture navigation, two button navigation, which is that really weird Android P1 or three button navigation. So, just to show you guys, I've of course got it on the gesture navigation, which is going to be the system wide navigation feature moving forward from now. So, again, one of the complaints I'd had from beta 4 was that you're unable to like reach the recent app screen unless you do like some really weird swipe gesture here. Uh, they fixed that. Now all you need to do is sort of swipe up and hold and you will reach your recent apps. And if you do a longer swipe, then of course you go straight into the app drawer. Uh, but yeah, short swipe and hold will still bring you into your recent apps like that, which I'm very thankful for because earlier you had to do like this side swipe and then up, which is uh, really annoying. And some of the comments in the earlier video also uh, seem to have the same sentiment about that bug, but it's been fixed since beta five. Something new in beta six is the fact that when you go into an app, of course, you can see this bar down here, but on the home screen, it vanishes. So um, I guess that's just for a cleaner look. It's just a visual change. So, I mean, it does still function the same way, uh, but it's just that bar isn't there right now, as you can see. Another thing that's new about Android Q is when you go into apps, let's just go ahead and uh, clear the data on this so that you guys can see how apps ask for permissions once again. Uh, it's a little different. It's not like a it's not like a smaller menu. It does this where you can allow it all the time or you can allow it only while you're using the app for this one time and then if it shuts down, it'll ask for it again or you can completely deny it. Again, the camera works completely fine and something new that's happened and it, this wasn't working even in beta 5, but in beta 6, you're finally able now to get Gcam working. Uh, any of our Nova's latest Gcams work, even the 6.21, which doesn't accept XML files or you can do his like latest 1.71 and load the essential setting uh, the essential settings XML file. So yeah, so we have Gcam working now, which is great because earlier, like it was working, but every time you take a photo, there'd just be like these really weird visual glitches that would happen. And um, it's good to see that the Gcam is finally working. Uh, another thing that I was talking about in beta four is when you do this swipe to go to recent apps, there's sometimes this like stutter 
that stutter is just not there anymore. You don't, uh, you don't actually see it even while doing the swipe. Uh, I mentioned when you go into recent apps and then go into an app, you never file, you never like find any stutter or slowdown. Uh, but while doing like this, they used to be stutters while switching apps through a quick swipe. They used to be uh, stutters. Now there aren't. There's sometimes like a, a visual, not a slowdown, but I guess like just a micro stutter. But again, that's not lag. I think that's just more of like not as polished a UI as they probably will have in beta 6 or through future updates. But it's, it doesn't like slow down or lag anymore, which is what it was doing um, in beta 4. Other things that have changed are... Uh, basically, like I was talking about the hamburger menu because we know that the back is just a swipe from either. So if you can see this arrow, that's how you go back, right? So you just want to swipe this way and go back. Now, in um, basically in beta 4 and beta 5, uh, they were trying to figure out how they're going to handle the hamburger menu because if you don't have these uh, gesture navigation sort of turned on, you could just like swipe from here and then you'd go into the hamburger menu. Uh, so basically they were like, we were expecting there to be some sort of uh, option, choose only one side to swipe on to go back and then you could use the right side for that and the left side for hamburger menus. Or there was going to be like a sensitivity where if you swipe with a certain sensitivity, then it goes back. Otherwise it opens the hamburger menu and things like that. But these aren't settings that we've been able to see in, um, in this beta six. So, the way I figured out, and I think this is actually not a bad way to do it, is um, some people said, you know, just hold there a little longer and then swipe, but that still does back for me in this beta. So what you want to do is sort of just go to the edge, uh, swipe down, and then if you swipe to the right, it opens that hamburger menu. So just go down and swipe. Uh, so I'm doing this through a camera, so it's a little confusing. There we go. But it's really smooth in person. I've also got a tempered glass, so that makes it a little harder. But yeah, if you go ahead and just swipe down and swipe to the right, it takes you to the hamburger menu. Whereas if you just swipe, it'll swipe back. And I think uh, while it's not like well advertised and this might not be the best solution, it's still way better than having to like sort of guess. So I would say this is like an improved version of uh, these gesture navigations. I'd be okay using something like this. I don't think like I'm never getting confused between the hamburger menu and going back, right? Because I always know how I'm gonna reach the hamburger menu and how I'm gonna go back. So I think this is definitely super improved from uh, from the last version. So again, just to go over things, um, there have been some bug fixes that I spoke about. Uh, no micro starters, Gcam works now. So a third party app, uh, camera application should work. The, the official camera app was always working. Uh, lastly, again, this is something that I wanted to make sure stays. So I, it looks like in the final version of Android Q, we will be having this in uh, develop options where you can change uh, the accent color. Uh, so you can change the accent color to whatever you want. Uh, you can also just straight up change it to black. And one thing that I was asked was when you change it to black and then you change the mode to dark, is it just like black on black? So if you have night mode or dark mode enabled, so let's do that, the AR dark theme. So if you have dark theme on, does the black accent just become like black and on gray? But it really doesn't. It's just like it's white on black, which I think also just looks really, really cool. Uh, again, when you turn on uh, dark theme, a lot of the other apps change. And actually, you can even turn... I don't actually have WhatsApp on this, but there's a way to turn WhatsApp into dark mode. Also, if you're running Android uh, Q and you, in, and you have the dark theme running. But again, a lot of the apps also change uh, like their UI elements, so I thought messages should, but phone definitely does, as you can see, it used to be white. Uh, another one that does change, I know for a fact, is Google Keep. So now if we go back, let's just go back uh, to where we change the theme. And if we change the dark theme off again, you'll see the dialer has gone back to white. And this is because um, when you turn on the dark theme, in Android Q, it's like a system-wide thing. It lets other apps know what theme you're on and then it accordingly uh, can shift. And that's why you need Android Q for the WhatsApp dark theme and Google Keep and a lot of these other apps will switch automatically even if they're not necessarily Google apps. So yeah, this is just the last uh, quick overview I wanted to do of Android Q betas for the Essential Phone. As you can see, I think this is a much more stable release. Like I would be happy to receive this even as the final version of Android Q. I think gestures have greatly improved. 
I think uh, there have been a lot of other small changes that have made this like a far more usable and stable um, stable like version of the operating system because there's no more like there are no more stutters and basically everything works i'm not getting confused with hamburger menus again that's a personal choice it might be that you guys still get confused over how to do that uh but i don't get confused and again lastly one of my complaints was that you couldn't reach recent apps from the home screen you can now all you have to do is do a half swipe and hold uh, as opposed to like a full swipe from the top which will bring you your app drawer and lastly of course that UI element where we don't have uh, the gesture bar in the home screen but you sort of know it's there as just a visual tweak so yeah these are some of the changes that I thought uh, again I think it's a much more improved version of it and looking forward to finally receiving Android Q official final release for the essential phone thank you